Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindian, wishing you a very happy new year and welcoming you to Out of the Buck Baseball 21 with the Orioles of Baltimore. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting episode because we have to basically completely revamp two thirds of our pitching staff in general. It's not great. In other words, um, we went from, let me, let me quickly show you and impress upon you the horrors that have befallen our team. Uh, here we go. So for the longest time, we've had Leiter, Hendricks, and Thomas. We ended 2034 with only Thomas and Leiter in a lesser role from the previous season. We basically lost our closer because he now sucks donkey balls. Um, we have a lot of changes to make to this team. Uh, we're replacing most of our rotation. Um... Most of our best bullpen people failed dramatically, all triggered by a significant decline in defense. Our offense did amazingly. Our offense did what we wanted it to do, even as certain players somewhat declined. Some of the young guns truly established themselves, not the least of which is Luis Amaya and Jordan Diaz. Um... Danny Moreno has gotten himself or has been negotiated a big fat contract extension. Um, Mike Everman had his first chance to start in the majors and didn't totally embarrass himself. But we definitely need to make some changes in the pitching staff. You'll notice a notable absence from our rotation, which is the injured Jack Leiter. Jack Leiter has undergone several injuries over the past few seasons, and he's now at the point where his precision still makes him useful, but not at the price that he was asking for. So we're going to be rebuilding most of the rotation. Of the people who pitched last season, uh, Chris Thomas definitely deserves another shot. Um, Sonny Hoskins has not impressed, but I think he's at least earned another opportunity to improve. The home runs are going to be a big issue for him, and I'm hoping that he can at least somewhat mitigate that with a bit more luck this season. Uh, Hoskins is a fifth, is a, oh, he was a supplemental pick, okay. Zachariah Bernodi is not remotely ready for the majors, but he was pressed into service because someone had to be a starter. And then Sean Dozier, who has just been really the workhorse of this pitching staff, provided some quality innings when we desperately needed them. But as you can see here, we had three starters on the disabled list. And... We really need stability in the rotation if we're going to return to some level of playoff success. So the good stories from last season, the rookie campaign of Victor Salinas, who led the league in stolen bases, had over 200 hits, and played somewhat below average but still acceptable second base. Luisa Maya's transformation from afterthought to linchpin. Uh, Danny Moreno saying, remember last season, I'm going to do it, but do it better. Because I'm going to do it for longer. Led the league in triples, which is fun. Um, but yeah, Amaya, Salinas, 
Jordan Diaz, who was injured for part of the season, but otherwise showed that at least his bat will play very nicely at the major league level. Uh, his glove, not as much, but we're a team that we've just kind of re-envisioned ourselves as more a team of offense featuring defense than defense supported by offense. Because some of our best players are also some of our worst defenders, like Strooby Doo here, uh, and his unimpressive left field play. All this is to say, there's a lot that went right offensively last season, but we pretty much need to blow up most of this pitching staff and start again from the ground up. Uh, Tim Locke's brief cup of coffee in the minors was very welcome. I don't know that he's automatically won a role in the major league rotation this season, but we're going to see what happens uh, as our offseason begins. So let's go to salary arbitration. First of all, Dan Almaviska, I'm just going to go ahead and give you your one-year deal. I'm not even going to argue... I'm going to give you a bit of a raise. Rocky Bernal. I've never been able to trust him as a starter. Which is, again, as much my failing as it is anyone else's. But... You know what? A, a minor raise for him is not unreasonable, given the circumstances. Sean Dozier have another year deal Brian Mapp I definitely think has earned a bit of a raise incremental raises are the order of the day for this season I don't know what's going on here I don't know how a pitcher that was so dominant in 2033 could just fall off the earth in 2034 other than this number right here, his walk rate shot through the roof, which is always going to be an issue for Mr. Neal. I'm going to go ahead and give him a one-year deal, but I'm cautious of him. Oh, Neal doesn't even want to talk to me. That's how many just his dislikes me. Fair enough. Ocasio, I think it's reasonable to give you a bit of a raise. All right, Hirschauer. I am not paying $10 million to a reliever who's given me three good seasons, who was just, he just shat the bed last season. Now, I don't think he'll even talk to me. I'm fine with that. Nelson Vasquez, you can come back as my backup. Micah Burns, I'm okay. Micah Burns doesn't like me. Who is... Is it my bench coach? I don't know why it is that some of these guys are just being flat-out jerks. Um, Bobby Dwyer. I can give him another year. All right. The Jack Leiter scenario is an important one. What would it take to get him to sign a new deal? He wants basically to get paid. He thinks he's still the pitcher he always was. I strongly disagree. I'm going to offer you the qualifying offer. And if you turn me down, you turn me down. And you can find some other team to sucker into paying you 20 plus million dollars. Um... Is Jack Leiter still a Hall of Famer? I think he is. I think he almost certainly is. He's basically Pedro Martinez with a longer peak. That's not true. Pedro was better than Jack Leiter, but it's pretty close. And I want nothing more than to bring him back and let him be a part of the next great Orioles rotation. But I don't have the resources, nor the will, nor frankly the desire 
to pay him 25 or 27 million dollars when he lost significant velocity off of his fastball to the point where he's no longer a big strikeout guy he's going to be an innings eater if even he recovers at all from his injuries so let's go ahead and advance Uh, apparently, Dan Amaviska is super popular. That's good to know. I think the people that are angry are mad that they're not getting a bigger role on the team. Oh, bearing the lead, the NL into the designated hitter. Uh, okay. Uh, Bernodi, you go to Triple A. There you go, Lonson. Yeah, Lonson really concerned me this season. He significantly struggled. And I'm really hoping to see more out of him in his second season in the majors because... I need it. I need some of some of my starting pitching prospects to actually turn into starters. Um, Chris, why can I not offer you an extension? How peculiar. Oh, right, because he has a one-year extension, and until the next season starts, yeah, 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 okay. All right, Danny Moreno is locked up for several seasons now, but I've still got a lot of money to spend, which is the really good news. We can be big players on any free agent that we've a mind to be a big player on. I hope Salinas gets Rookie of the Year, but other than that, I wouldn't be shocked at all to see that none of my players won anything a gold glove for chris thomas a silver slugger to danny moreno very nice salinas was received most of the votes for rookie of the year all in all, a good deal. Uh, scouting budget. I'm not going to give you $24 million because I want to see how much I can get out of free agency. I didn't even try signing anybody. Oh, well. That's fine. All right. Uh, arbitration hearings. I'm going to have a couple of those. Jack Leiter declined the qualifying offer. I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, he's... I'm going to wait till free agency filings and then let him recalculate his value. This isn't a great season to need a new starter, it would appear. But we're going to figure something out. Don't you worry. Uh, okay. Yeah, Jack, I'm not even going to offer you $20 million. That's too much money. Uh, I can't afford that. All right. Who should we go after? Vladimir Davila is a very fine starter with very low stamina. And who wants just all of the money? I think I'm going to pass on that. We could go for Glaber Torres, but he's a bad shortstop now.
Jonathan Bolin would be good if I knew he would recover. This is unfortunately a pretty crappy season to have a bunch of money at your disposal. Um... No, Jack Flaherty is... All right, let's look at starting pitchers because we're going to spend... All right, first of all, Greg Deadweiler, I will offer you a minor league deal. None of these starters fill me with glee as far as I definitely want to pay them to come to my team. Edward Cabrera's got issues throwing strikes, and even worse, he's going to miss most of the season. I guess Danny Gutierrez at least keeps the ball on the ground. He's got injury issues too, though. What a terrible season to need a starting pitcher. Alright, Jack Leiter, here's my offer. Two years, ten million dollars. No, it's not fair. One year, ten million. One year, fifteen million. I can't. I love Jack Leiter, but he seems intent on getting paid money I can't afford. But by submitting an offer, he'll at least talk to me uh, if nobody else is available and wants to join us. Now you look like a tasty little pitcher to add to my roster. Good control, good ground ball pitcher, Iron Man doesn't get hurt. Yeah, you know what? Ben Metz. That's worth $20 million over three years. Sure. Is there a big fish? Is there a player that's so dominant that adding him would completely transform my team? All right, where else could we do some with some upgrades? Shortstop. I think is the other area I'd like to pursue. All right, what do we got in shortstops this free agent class? Let's assume for the moment that Gleyber Torres is a non-starter, which he is a non-starter. Frankie Lindor is an awfully expensive one-year rental, but still offers... Hey, it's Luis Garcia. I kind of want, like, an amazing defensive shortstop. Like, honestly, Frankie Lindor makes a bit of sense as a one- or two-year signing. I mean, until his last season with Columbus, he was still hitting fairly well. How close are you to, like, the Hall of Fame? Holy shit. Oh, it's including... I just want the major leagues, please. He's got 3,000 hits. Uh, I didn't expect that. What a guy. He's got almost 700 homers as a shortstop. Yeah. You know what? 
Uh, hell no. I'm not paying you for that long. How about two years? As much as I wouldn't mind bringing Jack Leiter back, and I wouldn't in the least, I have very grave concerns about paying someone of his age and his caliber that much money. And if he comes back to me with a reasonable offer, which I think I've done enough for that, I will be very pleased. Erp. Um, you both kind of stink. I'll vote for McCutcheon. Any first timers here? Uh, Chris Sale, David Price. I can't not vote for someone with 600 plus homers. Hey, Mike Trout finally freaking retired. That's an easy layup of a vote. Anybody else? I mean, I guess I could vote for Nelson Cruz. But then I have to vote for Ryan Braun, too. And I don't really think Ryan Braun deserves it. You know what? This is fine. I'm just going to deal with it as is. There we go. No, I've got a shortstop plan in mind. What I need is starting pitching. Give me starter. Cesar Cervantes seems like he'd be a very excellent trade. But I don't think you'll let me trade for him, will you? Yeah, you won't. Um, what is my draft order? What am I? I'm gonna pick sixteenth. It's still not really worth spending a bunch of time examining the draft pool. Because <clears throat> there's not 16 great players in this draft. There's just a handful of decent players. And it's unlikely that any of them would fall to me. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, my scout really doesn't like most of these guys. Um, which definitely makes me uneasy about chipping in. Um, wait a minute. Oh, you would just be a really good reliever. I could use a great closer, to be honest. I'll pony up some dough for that. Anchor the bullpen. I like that. Basically what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for some of the other pitchers to come off the market so that I can start getting involved in some of these starters. Alright, so we got Frankie. And I got my closer.
And Brian Metz is thinking about my offer, as of course he should. Demote. Kata. Who on the 40 man could be designated for assignment to free up Pat Went? Because I needed to free up a spot on the 40 man. Um, and I'm going to send Everman to Triple A. Hmm. That's fine, Chicago. You do you. Did you literally just miss the part where I just signed the best Japanese closer on the market? I suppose you did, because otherwise you wouldn't make such a stupid offer to me. All right, we got ourselves a Ben Metz to improve our rotation. Bernodi, I don't care if anybody claims you. I need to create a roster spot for an actual good pitcher. Not a great pitcher, maybe, but at least a good pitcher. I wonder if I can just flip Bernal for a really good starting pitcher, regardless of cost. <clears throat> like Joe Duncan, maybe? Uh, I do also like Carl Hartman, even if Hartman hasn't stayed. Oh, you've mostly been a reliever. Yeah, you hack. Give me Joe Duncan. I'll take him. Oh shoot, I didn't check to see if I have anybody that I could lose. That would be extremely bad to lose. I don't want to lose champion. I need a good backup corner guy. Andy Green, I'm quite certain that no one will claim you. That way I can put champion on the 40, man. If anyone else here gets claimed, I'm not that bothered by it. Mike Burroughs is a really good defensive shortstop. I don't want to lose him without a fight either. Um, yeah, this guy Rhodes, I don't even know how you ended up on my 40 man to begin with. I think I was just desperate. There we go. Burroughs is not protected. I think Boyd can fill the role that Went would have filled without too much of a hassle. I sure have a lot of amazing looking relievers, don't I?
so basically the rotation is going to be Duncan, Thomas, Metz, and then Lonzen, and maybe somebody else. I mean, it has to be somebody else, right? But... Go to the rule five. I'm not gonna be able to take anybody. I don't have any roster spots. Oh no. Oh well. I'm probably gonna lose at least Voltiera. He's too good a starter. Really, I lost Josh Stebbins and nobody else. Okay, I feel kind of dumb that I didn't have Stebbins on my radar, but... He's actually a pretty darn good catcher. Huh. I feel pretty dumb now. Alright. The last remaining piece is to see if Jack Leiter doesn't get signed. Because I want Jack Leiter to come back. I just don't want to pay for him. I'd love to have him as like my fifth starter. Did somebody already sign Leiter? No, they didn't. Alright. Two years, and I need you to take a bit less this season. Okay, I've pissed him off. That's fine. It's not fine, but there's also nothing I can do about it. Um, you're going to be a tricky one, Chris Thomas. Um, and boy, can I not afford to lose you. I could lock up, like, Solis and free up some payroll room that way. No, I guess not. Yeah, unless they'll sign long-term contracts, I'm just going to be trapped back into this, but... You know what? I'm comfortable with this offseason, and I think we've at least increased our chances of winning, even if we may have cost ourselves the best pitcher the Baltimore Orioles have ever had. I'm sorry, dude. I know we got a supplemental second round pick. How much did he sign for? Yeah, you know what? I don't blame you, Toronto. You now know all of my secrets, which are that Jack Leiter was amazing and now he's not. Um, hmm. I probably could have signed him back for that amount, but I was sick of his crap. Trout and Stanton both got elected. Yadi Molina didn't make it. Damn. Andrelton Simmons didn't even make 5%. Goldschmidt technically should have kept going, but maybe not. Hmm. That's rough. But yeah, Mike Trout was, yeah, that's, he's Mike Trout. That's all we really need to know, right? Are you giving me more money? No. Hey, Bobby Witt Jr. is still playing in the major leagues. 
He's had a couple of good seasons the last two years. I'm quite impressed. Because he sure as shit never did anything for anyone else he ever played for. Eh, good for him. I'm going to go to spring training. Ooh. That was a disgusting burp. That's what happens when you have tacos for lunch. Um, Kessler looks a bit better. Santoya is starting to slip a little bit. I don't like seeing that. Okay. So far, not a big deal for any of the things that have been happening. All right, Adley Rushman, I need you to do me a favor. It would be a tremendous gesture on your part. I need you to retire so that I don't look like a jerk for not re-signing you. Because if you don't retire, I'm probably going to have to opt out of your deal. Um, I spent $60 million this offseason. $40 million. No more than that, because I got Mets too. Yeah, about $60 million on players this offseason in an attempt to reinvigorate this franchise for one last run. Um, anybody I want to give some spring training time to? Brant, yes. Voltiera. Deadweiler. Henry. Kestner. I think you've gotten to the point where they're going to stop using you anywhere but catcher. I'm going to go ahead and take off the you must play a catcher rule just so that you'll be mixed in with Rushman during spring training, which is what I want. Um, Navarez? No, you get promoted to AAA, but I'm not quite ready to let you have a, a role in the majors yet. Yeah, I think this is good. We sure have a lot of bad players, though, that aren't breaking through, as I'd hoped. But most of the fruits of the ma minor leagues are in the majors now. That's the problem with having built a good farm system for so long. Um... Would anybody offer me anything for Dwyer? I feel like Dwyer is an unnecessary luxury on a team that doesn't need him, but maybe it does. I could have one of the sickest bullpens in Major League history, and it won't matter if my rotation's not better this season. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, all right, we're going to go six man, and I'm going to let my bench coach set my pitching staff. No, if it's between Locke and Neil, you will start Locke in spring training. You can do whatever you want to. I don't even care. Lineups. Give them to me. You're really benching Santoya? He's too expensive to bench. Mm. I don't mind him actually playing in spring training a little bit less than normal. Maybe he'll be a little bit better and fresher when it's time for majors. 
Of course. We don't we wouldn't want to start the season any other way than a random pitcher getting hurt. That's kind of the Orioles way now. I hate to say this because he's been so good for so long. Like he's been amazingly good for a long time. Maybe I need to move on from Santoya. Maybe that's just where I am right now. Because here's my issue with Santoya. He's a very good but very limited first baseman. And he's making a pretty high amount of money. And I know he's consistently been one of the heart of this team offensively ever since Ryan Mountcastle left us. But... I look at the salary and I'm like, how do I afford Chris Thomas if I have Jose Santoya, whose contract goes up? Do I have to choose between Rushman and keeping the one starter on my team that I've developed? Because I got a lot of players that are due some pretty big raises. Um, many of whom I don't want to give those raises to. I think maybe I'm, I'm going to try to trade Santoya. Mm. Yes. How bad is Solis as a first baseman? He's not that bad. I won't lose too much defensively by having him play first. I will take any player for Santoya. I've got a feeling I'm not going to get very many good offers, though. He says, as the offers come flying in. Ah, uh, holy shit, there's a lot of offers here. Okay. Now that presents an interesting offer. Diaz to DH. Jimenez to third? giving us a good contact hitting power guy okay this i had no idea that so many people would be so interested in him this completely changes my strategy and eliminates most of my reluctance toward getting rid of him um no i don't trust tj wilson yet Do I trust... Oh, God, no. You'd be eaten alive. I can't go for that. Juan Valencia? I struggle to see why you're a 75, unless it's just because of how good you are at third base. And he could opt out after the season. Mm. I'm trying to save money is the thing, though. I don't want to trade for a player that then ultimately ties up my money. All right, let me re eliminate veterans as a consideration. Let's just go for prospects and regulars. I'm becoming increasingly intrigued by Jimenez, Luis Jimenez, as a fair compensation for Santoya. I do like TJ Wilson very much. But he would also involve taking on a significantly more salary, and my objective here is saving money so that I can apply that to my young studs.
There's the incomparable Devin Fetter King. I just acquired Lindor. That's not an amazing decision. I could bring back Josh Roberts, um, but with Santoya gone, I won't need a Josh Roberts. What I'll need is an everyday starting third baseman when Diaz ships over to DH. And I want that third baseman to be a good defender. So it comes down to this. Do I take Juan Valencia, who could replace Santoya's bat to a certain degree, and maybe the glove, or do I go for the unproven but really inexpensive option? Uh, Frederick King, I don't need a second baseman, but thank you. Jose Vasquez has just been churning along, but I've got a better center fielder now. I think Jimenez is my man. I think he's ready for the big leagues. And I think he will prove to be a useful addition to the roster. I'll see if I can't get you to offer me a couple more players. Because I want to get while the getting is good. But if I can't, I can't. I don't really want an Aguilar. I mean, unless you're offering. No. You're not offering. That's fine. Can I get Ben Mays, too? And if, what else would it take? It would take something fairly significant, so then the answer to that is no. I just want one more prospect, any kind of prospect. I could get Josh Stebbins and just get my own player back and then make him my backup catcher maybe what about Ben Walls does that you like it okay can I get one more player just one how's about Dave Ortiz He'll need to think about it. Please do. I mean, you just crippled another one of my players, but that's not what I care about. Okay. But we're very, very close to the deal. Uh, so I'm going to take... Here, take Ruiz off my hands. Complete. I am a bit sorry that the game is mad about me getting rid of Santoya, but I needed what I needed, and what I needed was his contract off of my payroll. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Wait, what? Why are you not even considering putting Jimenez in? Do you genuinely not think that Jimenez is as good as Burns? Why? Meh. We'll see how he develops. You know what, it wouldn't be the worst idea for him to maybe spend the year in AAA. 
uh, and get a bit more seasoning. OSA really likes him. I merely like him a lot. And most importantly, that frees up some payroll for next season. Ooh. If I do that, am I overpaying for mediocrity? I'll tell you what, my dude. Let's make this a four-year deal with two team options. We'll do a team option and a player option. That seems good. All right. Let's see how that offer goes over with Mr. Thomas. I don't care that people are, are mildly injured. Just move on. Very good. Uh, the fans are pretty happy about Chris Thomas coming back. I'm equally happy. Because here's the thing. Our, if we lose Andy Neal, I'll be sad, but I won't really care that much. Because he just... He's not a massive part of my team... I think he's just the one player that I could never quite give up on. But, meh. I am concerned about Smart and particularly Solis. You're my everyday first baseman now. Please don't make me regret that decision, Solis. I don't think he will. Are you fucking mental now let me bring up one part of this I don't dislike I think Rodrigo Rivera is amazing what if I drop Solis and lock I'd have to give up Diaz or Salinas I don't really want to give up either one of them. But heck, right? This is a major upgrade to my rotation, if I can pull this off. How about... Ford? No. Don't I have another first base prospect deeper in the minors that I just keep, that I just keep ignoring? How about Anthony Champion? That does move the needle. This is not what I plan to do, but this is such an opportunity. All right, how would you like your very own Bobby Dwyer? Because I'm going to get rid of the guys. I'm going to try to shed some, some garbage payroll. Alright. Am I giving up a lot here? I'm really not. Champion is the big piece here. And I think Champion's going to be a very good hitter. But both my corner outfield spots are kind of occupied for the next few seasons. No, that actually made it worse. Trying to give you Dwyer makes you like it less. I can't give you Cooper. I can't risk that. Um... Micah Burns? No, you're still wanting me to give you a pretty big piece, even with Micah Burns. I 
I am getting an ace. Is it worth holding out on an ace just so I can keep a reliever? What about Devin Mann? No, we don't get quite into the give me anything you want territory. Jordan Lara? I can't leave this trade without making it happen. Even if it means giving up one of my better relievers. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, a reliever is a reliever. This is giving me an A starter. Who, look, admittedly, he's probably going to struggle a tiny bit in Baltimore because of his movement. But I'm hoping the rest of the package is going to be enough to tie it together, even if he does give up more homers. Like, I'm not disputing at all. This is a pretty massive deal. And I don't mind spending some capital on it. What are you interested in? Brant, Castaneda, Dozier... Dozier has been surprisingly solid when I've needed him. I don't want to trade him if I don't have to. You can have Brown. Definitely lock pitches over Neil. I want lock to get a few quality reps here in spring training. I gave up a lot for that trade, but I'm thinking it might be worth it. Man, no separated shoulders. Bad deal. Yeah, just kill all of my shortstops because killing all of my starters wasn't enough last season game. Give me a bloody break. How are all of these guys getting injured only in spring training? Like, come on, dudes. Give me a damn break. All right. So, let's start with... You're going to come back. Actually, if you're going to be healthy in one day, I'm just going to go boop like that. All right, Mr. Megs, you're going on the 10, 15-day DL. Reese, you're going to go on the DL. Everman is going to go to the DL. All right, so I now have 41 players that I need to dispose of in one manner or another. So, Deadweiler to the Miners, easy choice. I have really rebuilt this pitching staff in one season, one off season, and I think I've made mostly the right moves. Um, all right, how much did you pitch at AAA? Locke, I want you to start in AAA. I don't want to turn you from a possible ace into a mediocre pitcher. I don't want that to be you. Man to the minors. Valtiera to the minors. Who is Savone in any way? Oh, I think I know who you are. Yeah, you go to the minors. Rubio to the minors.
Uh, Lonson, I want to set you as a starter, and I want to do the same with Amaviska, just so I can get a sense of who my fifth starter should be. Uh, not Amaviska. You're merely a very deep reliever. How many pitches does this give me? It gives me 15. I still have to get rid of pitchers. Uh, Brant to AAA. Hoskins, no. Come on, game. Who else can I send down? If I, look, if I can find one more pitcher to send to the minors, I think it's going to be Hoskins. All right. I don't really need three catchers. So the million dollar question now is, do I make Rivera my backup or do I let Rivera play in AAA? And I think I let Rivera play in AAA this season. I've got a lot invested in your success and I want you to try to achieve some level of that success in the minors before I consider calling you up. Can I get someone to give me something for Grulon? prospect please for a good prospect I'll flip Grulong mm. asking you shall receive I suppose yeah hook me up yo Give me Consiglio. It accomplishes what I wanted, which is freeing up a 40-man spot while not costing me very much. Kessner to the Miners, Henry to the Miners. Um... Who's my starting third baseman? All right. Cooper is a very good defensive third baseman. Let me compare Jimenez and Cooper. One of you is going to the minors. The other one is going to be my starting third baseman on opening day. All right. Cooper's a much better contact hitter. Uh, their gap power is about the same. But Cooper makes up for it in home run and batting eye. Well, he doesn't strike out as much. Um, Cooper is, or Jimenez is the much better runner. Let's look defensively. Defensively, Cooper is ever so slightly better. So Cooper, you're gonna be my starting third baseman. And Jimenez, you're going to stay in the minors while you practice your craft. I only get 28 players, right? So I've got to find two more to send on their way. Burns plays second, third, and short, so I don't also need Boyd. I only really need one or the other. But Diaz, you're a DH now. A very good one, but you were only ever an, a mediocre third baseman, and I think having you there is going to be a big help. Do I really need five outfielders? Oh, Burroughs, I totally forgot about you. Yeah, you're going to be my opening day starting shortstop just because Lindor is hurt. So Cooper starts at third, Salinas at second, Burns is my backup. Lindor starts at shortstop with Burroughs ready to take over. I could just put Lindor on the DL, but I really don't want to. I'm going to send down Dwyer again. There we go. 
Alright, let us advance to opening day after I quickly check to see if anyone needs to be placed on the 40-man. I don't think they do, though. They don't. Okay. I feel kind of dirty not having Jack Leiter on our team. I really do. But we've got to do what we've got to do, right? And what we had to do was restock our farm system a bit. Where are we now? 22nd with one prospect. Ugh. Uh, but what we really needed to do this offseason was rebuild the rotation. And we've done exactly that. Uh, clear it. And I'm going to rebuild it the way I want it. So five men. Give me the pitching ratings so I can decide where to go from here. Starters only for right now, please. All right, Rodrigo Rivera obviously looks like the number one. Then Duncan. Then Thomas. I still trust Thomas more than just about anyone else on the roster. Then Mets, then Lonson batting sixth or pitching fifth. Yeah. And I definitely want to see him break the 150 inning mark before I ease up on the pitch count for him. All right, relievers. Andy Cullum looks like the obvious closer candidate, but I did spend a bunch of money on Dudaka. I'm going to make Colin my setup guy. Uh, Cull up. You're going to, Colin, you're going to be my eighth inning setup guy. Udaka, I'm going to make you my closer. Castaneda, you are my seventh inning setup guy. I don't have a proper anti lefty person. I mean, I guess I could be Amavisca, but then that also takes away my long man. Uh, you know what? Let's make you a specialist and then a long man. And then Dozier. Oh, no, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Dozier or Neil would be fine in that role. Yeah. I'm going to set both of you up as long... Or, no. Yeah, Dozier, you're my emergency starter long reliever. And Neil, you're my long... You're just a generic metal reliever who can fill in, I guess, as an emergency starter if I really need one. I think this is good. I think this is going to give us the best chance for success. I'm going to switch back so I can take a look at this. I'm putting an awful lot on Udaka's plate. And he's even a borderline starter if I want to get creative. But I think for now we can let you pitch or not as you see fit. All right, nuke everything. I said every single. Cullen, you are not a terrible contact hitter. I could maybe let you be a pinch hitter. Uh, slash backup outfielder. But let's start by determining who is the best hitter on my team. It's Danny Moreno. That's an easy choice. Even easier choice. Clean up. Bob Solis. There will be no easier decision this offseason. Uh, Jordan Diaz, I think, would be a fine number five hitter. Now, who is my leadoff guy? Is it Salinas for back of lack of a better option? 
maybe. I'm going to have Amaya bat second. And then Smart Pets hit sixth. Rushman seventh. Uh, Mike Cooper eighth. Sorry, Mike Cooper ninth. And then Francisco Lindor eighth. Okay. So that's done. That's my lineup. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now let's slot in our backups. Uh, easy choice. Only Nelson Vasquez can be the backup catcher to Adley Rushman. Uh, Micah Burns. You can play second, third, and short. Correction, you can play second and third. Uh, Burroughs is going to be short. And Burroughs, I want you starting once every 10 days at shortstop. Just to make sure that Lindor has plenty of rest and that we have an elite defender when we really need one. Um, who's my backup first baseman? Diaz, maybe? I, can't, I don't see why Diaz couldn't be a reasonably okay first baseman. Leave him back up there. And then who's the best hitter that doesn't have a regular spot? Is it really going to be... It's probably Andy Cullen, weirdly enough. So you're going to be my backup DH. Uh, in the outfield, we're going to have Meyer fill all of the outfield positions as the backup. Uh, Lee, my pinch hitter is going to be Andy Cullen. We're also going to have Micah Burns and Dave Meyer. Uh, my speedy boys are going to be Burns and Burrow or Meyer and Burrows. And then I think we just copy this and swap it over to versus lefties. So there we go. And this is still an intimidating lineup. That's maybe marginally better with Francisco Lindor as my shortstop. Um, and I will miss Santoya. Uh, I think he offered something unique that our lineup didn't have before. But the chance to get some pretty nice prospects and most importantly shed some salary which otherwise could have crippled us is worthwhile in my opinion. It truly is. It was the kind of trade that I think helps both teams. But I'm looking at this lineup, and I can't think of too many better. I'd like for Adley Rushman to slow his aging a bit. And obviously I can't control that, right? I'd like to get one more good year out of you. How much money do I have? I have 966000 It's not very much money. Plus my new starting pitcher. Wait, what? I'm gonna get real greedy. I know this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it, right? Uh, fuck it. Reset. Five years. One million. I don't think this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. No. All right, if he's happy with the dollar value. Then what if I just do this? 
no. All right, we'll figure something out with him. Hmm, you are presenting me with very expensive choices. How many uh, at-bats do I need from Lindor for him to vest his option? Oh, it's a player option. It's not a vesting option. Okay. That's unfortunate, but whatever. Whatevs. I don't know why Bobby Dwyer keeps saying he's going to get six, seven million dollars a season. He just needs to erase that idea from his brain. But. So, we had a big task this offseason. We need to completely rebuild the rotation. And we've done that. We need to restock the bullpen with talented arms and a new closer. We've done that. We needed to upgrade at shortstop. Done. We need to improve our team's defense. Putting Diaz at DH and having Mike Cooper play third is definitely that. <clears throat> all in all, we've addressed our team's biggest concerns. But. We're still in a bit of a crisis in terms of where we go from here. We don't have a deep minor league system anymore. Uh, the fruits of our, of our labor are mostly in the majors, with a handful of exceptions. Um, if John Rivera has a good season in AAA and can maybe push forward a bit in a couple of specific areas, he's probably going to make the roster as soon as next season. Tim Locke, I need to see you improve, just generally speaking, as a starter, but you've probably got a rotation spot earmarked next season. Then I have a bunch of mid-tier prospects, any of whom could be a starter on some teams and not on others. I've got some intriguing other players that are slowly making their way up. It's not that the team lacks for talent. It's that the team lacks for truly elite talent. Castillo being the one exception. Um, yeah, Castillo could be an amazing player one day. Here's the other problem that we potentially have. We have two players who are going to be getting arbitration for the first time. And those players are Doug Smart and Bob Solis. Both of whom are integral to our success as a major league franchise. So we're going to see how this works out for us. I think there's a lot of talent on this team. I think there's a lot of potential. And I think some of our potential is held up by just the injuries. Like, Rees is a great player. Everman is a player of baseball. I actually think Burroughs has lapped him already because Burroughs has an intriguing enough bat, potentially. Oh, how is Corona doing? How did he finish his season? He was sub-replacement level. Let's shortlist you. Oh, was I right? I'll be curious if he opts out of this deal. He'd be pretty doggone stupid to do it. But I hope I've actually crippled the Angels by giving them this giant contract they can't get rid of. Um. Yeah. Really? You don't like Solis? He's not extreme popularity? What? Yeah, if Andy Neal doesn't have another season like his 2033 season, I'm not going to re-sign him. But hopefully with a better defense, we'll see better results. 
here is my big concern about this offense next season. It's the man at the top, Victor Salinas. Because we were burned by a second baseman like this before. If you remember the Louis, the Luis Garcia debacle, where we paid a second baseman like $10 million a year, and he ended up being not very good. I don't think Salinas is that big an issue. But I'm counting on him to be the leadoff guy. And I'm also placing a lot on Amaya's shoulders, too. I think he can carry that load, but I am placing a lot on his shoulders, too. Um, but this is a very young starting lineup. Other than Rushman and Lindor, everyone is under 30. Heck, other than Rushman and Lindor, everyone might be under 25. Let me see here. No, not 25, but definitely under 30. Yeah, the only two starters that are older than that are Rushman and Lindor. And did I overpay for Lindor? I did. Uh, but I needed offense and defense from my shortstop. And I'm betting pretty high that he's going to enjoy his time in Baltimore. Will he? I don't know. Maybe he won't. But I hope he does. Rushman, I'm going to set an ultimatum for you. See this option? I bet you'd like me to pick it up. I need four wins. That's my minimum. I can't get... I've, if I gave up on Jack later, I can give up on you. If this is all you can provide, you're vastly overpaid. If you give me four wins, I'll pick up your option. That is what I need from you, Rushman. And it's probably a big ask. It's probably a very big ask. Are you a Hall of Famer yet? Hmm. Mm. I don't know. If you can give me 400 homers, I think you can get there. Because let's let's check something out here just to make sure that I'm accurately assessing his Hall of Fame chances. I mean, look at all-time catchers. Where does Adley Rushman fit? Fit. Okay, he's actually seventh all-time as a catcher. That's actually very good from my perspective. Because it basically means with a couple of good seasons, or even just one good season, he's going to... I guess I never realized how low war was for catchers, but yeah... Where's Pudge? Oh, he's already lapped Pudge. Both? No, not both Pudges. Just the one Pudge. Carlton Fisk is still number two all time. I guess maybe Adley Rushman is a Hall of Famer. I guess maybe I'm just being a little bit unfair. Who is the lead? I know the leader of homers as a catcher is probably going to be Piazza. Oh, it's Gary Sanchez. Okay. But it was Piazza, so I feel a little better about that. Fascinating. I could be the number two hitting catcher of all time. That's pretty good. How many game? Where am I at the games caught leaderboard for Rushman? Oh, dear Lord. I'm 33rd. Well... Yeah, I think Rushman, I think I'm going to opt out of his deal and see if he would take a smaller deal to stay with the team. Because he is a Hall of Fame catcher. I, I've convinced myself uh, he's either the fifth or sixth best play catcher ever. A total war. He's second or third in offense. Yeah. This is a Hall of Famer. 
Especially if he hits his 400th this season, which he well might. All right. I think I've done everything I want to do this episode, so let me once again thank you all for watching. Uh, may your 2021 be infinitely better than your 2020, which shouldn't be too hard for most people. Um, thank you for supporting the channel, even if all you do is just like the occasional video. It really helps me out. It convinces me to keep going. But until next time, this has been Avendian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you 